Hello and welcome to module 35 of chemical kinetics and transition state theory. Uh, today's contents are going to be somewhat different than what you will typically study in your courses. Uh, but I believe it is still very important to learn this point. Uh, remember we are learning so that we can calculate rate constants for a general problem. Uh, what we have learned so far is uh, we started with these rate theories, we looked at transition state theory in great detail and in the last few modules we looked at molecular dynamics as an alternate way to calculate rate constants. We in the last module we looked at how uh, rolling spheres on potential energy surfaces can lead to more insights on chemical reactions. Today we will ask a different question. First thing is if I can run these molecular dynamics are rate theories really ne necessary? Well they are. The reason is these molecular dynamics are very computationally expensive. Okay? Uh, if uh, specifically if rate constants are slow, if you let us say have a reaction that is ha happening on a millisecond time scale, running a molecular dynamic simulation for that long a time is extremely hard. Very few computers in the world can do that kind of simulation. Uh, and it is not needed necessarily. We have transition state theory or alternate rate theories if you wish that can calculate these rate constants anyway. So if all that you want is to calculate a rate constant, then MD is not necessary. It is one of the tools. Okay. Uh, so transition state theory is uh, computationally cheap, it is effective. However, uh, and we looked at how to use transition state theory to actually calculate rate constants as well. We can divide partition functions into a translational, rotational and vibrational and then calculate a rate constant. Uh, however, there are situations when this uh, separation of partition functions is not always possible, it is not always accurate. So uh, is there a way for me to use the power of molecular dynamic simulations to calculate transition state rate? Okay. Actually the uh, answer is of course yes uh, and it is commonly being used. So I wanted to give you a little glimpse of it in this module and the next module on how uh, we can use the power of simulations to calculate a transition state rate. Okay. So we will have to go back to a rather old expression I derived uh, some time ago, almost 6-7 modules ago. Uh, we derived transition state theory in two ways and in the second approach that we looked at this integral we had derived. If you do not remember you can go back to your module 27. This is nothing but this integral is your uh, forward flux. This is an integral over the dividing surface of e to the power of minus beta h and this is nothing but your partition function of the reactant. Okay. Okay. So I, this is going to be my starting point. I will manipulate this bit, thing a little bit more. Okay. So let me start with this. So I will do the following. Uh, first thing I will separate out all momentum integrals completely uh, in the denominator I will take out the momentum term. So I have taken out this term and hr I am saying is equal to pi square over 2m plus v of r okay. multiplied by all kind of other integrals uh, dp2 I am also assuming this hts is equal to sum over i pi square over 2m plus v of transition state q comma p. So I will have to delete this thing because I will run out of space. I will just write it below for your convenience. Okay. 
okay and in the denominator I will uh, have the actually the exact same term both of them having the same limits. You will notice I will have these for all 3n integrals. and then I will have the position integrals that I can't do anything about, not yet. Okay, I will simplify this a little bit. What does this mean really? This term is really uh, the potential of transition state at q comma p really means v of the reaction coordinate equal to q1 dagger the transition state geometry comma all other coordinates. Okay. This is uh, basically the definition of VPS that my V is set of q1 is set at q1 dagger which is my transition state geometry. So, this is q1 equal to q1 dagger comma q2 to qn, q3n sorry, divided by an integral over q1 to q3n e to the power of minus beta v q1 to q3n. Okay. So, I have just written everything very very clearly, every term uh, explicitly. So, all the momentum terms here cancel. Okay. Uh, let me just simplify this term. So, this term that I have, well we have been doing this kind of integrals very frequently, uh, today I have forgotten to provide you the integral equations here, but that is not a big deal. Uh, these you can look up uh, your integration tables, the numerator is uh, kBT and the denominator is going to be root 2 pi m kBT. So, these integrals are just looking up integral tables, do not worry too much about them. Uh, so, this is nothing but root of k t over 2 pi m. Okay. So, that is nothing but your average velocity, average momentum. Okay. So, uh, I end up uh, with this equation now. The all the momentum uh, integrals had cancelled except for p 1 and the p 1 integral gave me this term k t over 2 pi m square root. And I am left with still the integrals over all other coordinates dq2 to dq3n, dq1 to dq3n, this, this. Now the fun will begin. I am going to define a, a function p of q1 naught to be this, where the, instead of q1 dagger, I have written q1 naught here. Okay, so just be careful here. I have I, this is not a mistake. I have consciously written this. So, q1 naught is some variable, it can take any value, not necessarily the only the transition state value, okay. some q1 naught, call it x if you want, call it y if you want, I will call it q1 naught because that is what I want. Okay. And the denominator is exactly the same here. Uh, so, k uh, is nothing but this uh, square root of kt over 2 pi m term into p of q1 dagger specifically. Okay. So, if I put q1 dagger here, I will get q1 dagger here and I will get exactly this term. Okay. No, it sounds something trivial to do, something stupid to do, but let us do it nonetheless. Let us now think of what I have defined here, this p of q1 naught. Actually, this p of q1 naught is nothing but average of uh, q1 minus q1 naught delta. So, let me just uh, be clear, uh, average of any quantity O over reactant, this I am defining to be three n divided by uh, uh, sorry operator O here 
e to the power of minus beta v r. Okay, so that is how averages are defined, that is how thermal averages are taken. And here I am specifically taking thermal average with a denominator specified to only reactants. That is how transition state theory does to you. So, uh, I am saying that this p q 1 naught is nothing but average of this function and uh, I do not want to get into the technical nuances here, this is called Dirac delta function. But if you do not know then no problem, physically this is uh, p of q 1 naught is the probability, thermal probability of finding uh, q 1 equal to q 1 naught. Okay. So, if I take this integral here and I think that q 1 is fixed, there is no integral over q 1, q 1 is uh, specified, q 1 is specified to q 1 naught. Okay in the numerator, then I will get exactly this. Okay. Uh, I, this, this thing I do not worry about, this I have integra included in my uh, potential. So, do not worry about this part that much. So, P q 1 naught effectively tells me if I am at thermal equilibrium, what is the probability that q 1 is equal to q 1 naught. Okay. Particularly it is a probability density to be more accurate. Okay. Okay. Uh, this p q 1 naught, is there any way we can calculate it? So, that is the question. Remember our rate constant, my transition state theory rate constant is nothing but some constant that I anyway know, I know temperature, I know ma masses and all this into p. So, if I can tell you how to calculate p, I can tell you how to calculate rate constant. So, actually molecular dynamics can calculate p that is the point. So, uh, first thing is uh, what was molecular dynamics again? Molecular dynamics was x i dot equal to v i, v i dot equal to my acceleration which is nothing but minus 1 over mass. Okay. Well, this thing this solving these equations gives you n v e ensemble. But actually there are ways of solving equations that gives me n v t ensemble as well. I am not going into these details, but effectively you can add a thermal bath to your simulation. It is at the same way as Brownian dynamics work. You think of this system which is open, which has been, been complete, uh, constantly been colliding from other particles at some temperature t and that can be simulated. There are many, many different ways of doing that. So, uh, for now just assume that we I can simulate an NV2 ensemble as well. Well, uh, P Q1 naught then is not that hard to find really. P Q1 naught I can find using MD using the following way. Run MD simulation at this n v t ensemble. Okay. So, uh, you have some energy surface with you, I do not even care about this energy surfaces. I am trying to ask you what is the probability density of finding the particle at some q 1 naught. Well, the idea is I define a very small distance here. Okay. And I asked, so choose a small delta q. So, I, in my MD simulation, the point is how many times a ratio of times that q1 was equal to q1 naught divided by total simulation time. So, if what I am saying is if I run let us say a 1 nanosecond simulation and out of that 1 nanosecond uh, q1 was equal to I, my system was exploring this region for 1 picosecond. 
then the probability that I am at that region is 1 picosecond divided by 1 nanosecond, right? I explored this whole region in 1 nanosecond and in that 1 nanosecond, I was here only for this much time only, for 1 picosecond only. So, if I take the ratio, I will get uh, the probability density at that point. Well, there is one little trick here, in an MD simulation you have discrete times. So, Q1 equal to Q0 mathematically might not happen. You might come very close to Q1 naught, but not exactly on top. And that is a little just uh, nuance. And the way to solve that nuance is that we choose this small dt delta Q. And so, we find this ratio. So, time when uh, Q1 is really close to Q1 naught instead of equal to Q1 naught. So, when uh, Q1 minus Q1 naught is less than delta q. So, q1 minus q0, q1 naught is very small divided by simulation time. And since I have included this delta q, I have to divide by delta q. Because if delta q is large, then uh, well, you will spend more time there. So, if I choose instead of choosing this box, if I choose this box, well, of course, uh, you are going to spend relatively more time. So, we divide by delta q. Okay. So, this is the prescription using MD, you can actually find P of Q1 naught now. And once you have P of Q1 naught, you can also calculate P of Q1 dagger. And remember the transition state rate is proportional to this term multiplied by some root of kT over 2 pi m. But we actually have another snag here, another problem here. The problem is if the barrier height is quite large. If this is much larger than kT, then if you run an MD simulation, the time that you will spend here is extremely small. Most of the times you will be exploring this region or you are going to explore this region. And once in a blue moon, you will uh, actually explore this region. So, if I run a 1 nanosecond simulation, you might spend 1 femtosecond there. So, it is not very efficient. We have not achieved much here so far. We have to just hit this, uh, remove this little trouble that we have and there is a very clever way of doing it. So, I just wanted to show that. Okay? And this is a very common trick. We define a function now, just bear with me, see this is going to be very beautiful. Minus kt ln of p of q1 naught, just bear with me and let me define this function. For those who are familiar with a little bit more thermodynamics and statistical mechanics, this is the definition of free energy. This is how uh, free energies are defined in StatMec. But do not worry if you have not seen this. You can take this as a definition. All right. This will give me P of Q1 naught to be e to the power of minus W of Q1 naught divided by kT. Fine. That will give me P of Q1 dagger to be e to the power of minus W Q1 dagger over kt fine uh, let me also define p of q1 reactant so i'm thinking of this energy surface this is q1 dagger and let's say this is q1 r something that is close to a minima fine it seems like i'm doing some very stupid things i'm trying to confuse you or uh, fool you but i promise you i'm not uh, i will take a uh, divide these two so, P of Q1 dagger equal to P of Q1 R into e to the power of minus W of Q1 dagger minus W of Q1 R over kT. I have just taken a ratio of these two terms, still seems silly, I have not achieved anything look, look, looks like. My point is, I will now figure out how to calculate this and this separately. P of Q1 R is easy, Q1 R is close to a minimum. So, uh, I can actually use MD effectively to calculate P of Q1 R. Why? Because uh, your sim simulation is going to spend a lot of time close to the minimum. So, if I run a na 1 nanosecond simulation for more than half a nanosecond, you will be close to a minimum. So, you can get good statistics. You can quickly calculate P of Q1 R 
because trajectory spend more time close to Q1R. Good. But what about that? I still have to calculate this W and W is some weird the minus KT ln of this whatever. So now let us see what we can do. This is a real brilliance. It was originally given by Eyring and Keck, uh, Poliani, these people developed this. I have to calculate this quantity okay. and Bennett and Chandler effect, uh, eventually made it very concrete in terms of a simulation. I am going to write this difference as an integral, you are uh, rarely going to see this. that I take a simple subtraction of two terms and convert it into a complex integration, but it helps. Okay. So, you can quickly verify that this equation is true. If I take the derivative and take its integral, I will simply get W, W at Q1 dagger minus W of Q1 R, fine. Now, the point is this del W over del Q1 naught, let us try to calculate that. So, W was defined earlier like this here and P I had already defined like this. So, if I want to take del W over del Q1 naught, this is nothing but minus KT into 1 over P of Q1 naught into del P over del Q1 naught. So, I take the look at this P. Q1 naught is only here. So, this is equal to minus KT over P of Q1 naught and uh, I write all these integrals now. And I take the derivative of this term, the derivative of this term is e to the power of minus beta V Q1 naught Q2 Q3 n into derivative of the exponential. So, just uh, differentiating by parts nothing fancy minus beta del V over del Q1 naught divided by the denominator is independent of Q1 naught. So, I leave the denominator alone. All right. Now, notice beta is nothing but 1 over kt. So, a minus here and a minus here becomes plus. I have kt into beta divided by p. So, I take this p and write it again. So, I get into uh, let me write this term first. Sorry for a little uh, confusing statements. Q3 n into del V over del Q1 naught divided by you notice once I divide by the P here. So, if I am going to divide by P like this, uh, this denominator is going to cancel this integral dq1 to dq3 n is exactly written here. So, this exactly cancels. Uh, and I am left with okay. and I notice k t into beta is of course 1, beta is 1 over k t, so k t into beta is 1. Okay. So, I am left with uh, this integral. So, this integral is actually called uh, that W is called the potential of mean force. What you have gotten is this is nothing but average of del V over del Q1 naught at Q1 equal to Q1 naught. So, I am taking a thermal average and I am fixing Q1 equal to Q1 naught, okay. both in numerator and denominator. All right. 
del V over del Q1 naught is nothing but minus of force. So, dW over dQ1 naught is nothing but uh, average thermal force at Q1 equal to Q1 naught. Okay. So, that is why it is called potential of mean force. You are taking a mean force and you are converting a potential out of it. Okay. Okay. So, uh, this dW over dQ1 naught actually can also be computed using an MD simulation. Okay. So, uh, the point is in MD simulation, there is another trick I can do that I am not covering in this course. Uh, I can put constraints, constrain q1 equal to q1 naught and use NVT ensemble. So, if you download any of these popular softwares like Gromax or LAMPS which can run MD, they all will be able to do these tricks for you. Okay. So, uh, once that happens, you can basically run MD simulation, you have constrained Q1 equal to Q0 and that can be any value, you, that can also be the transition state value. And once you have done that, you can calculate average force. So, you calculate this derivative with respect to Q1, run your simulation and fix Q1 naught, Q1 equal to Q1 naught and just run the simulation and just find this average and that will give you dW over dQ1 naught. Okay. So, now we have a full prescription, uh, PQ1 dagger we had shown was PQ1 r into this uh, exponential and we had written this exponential as an integral. So, this I had written as p q 1 r into e to the power of minus beta integral from q 1 r to q 1 dagger uh, del w over del q 1 naught uh, d q 1 naught. Okay. p q 1 r I can calculate directly from an MD simulation by using this kind of a trick. And I do this integration numerically, I start at q1, q1 not equal to q1 r, I calculate this value, I shift q1 to q1 r plus some dq, I recalculate this. So, this integral itself now can be calculated numerically at uh, using small grids of q1. So, what I am again doing is, I am setting q1 equal to q1 r here. I calculate dW over del Q naught, then I shift Q equal to some Q1 R plus some del Q and I recalculate this function here and I keep on calculating it till Q1 dagger. And this integration then is nothing but uh, just F into del Q, sum over F into del Q. So, this integral is nothing but sum over I F I del Q. And again this dW over dQ I can calculate using a constrained uh, NVT MD simulation. So, this was a quick summary today of how we can use an MD simulation to calculate a transition state theory rate. So, this is useful when partition functions are not easily available, when you cannot separate let us say rotation and vibration or if the vibrations are not easy, uh, harmonic then what do you do? Then you do this kind of potential of mean force. Thank you very much.